I would like to go over in SOLIDWORKS how to make a pacifier like this. Uh, I think the key uh, thing is this uh, pattern. Notice this is pointing kind of up and this is pointing kind of down. So let's get uh, this pattern of bumps here to be normal to the surface that it's on. You can see they're not all in the same direction. They kind of tilt with the surface. And I think that's the key feature I want to go over. I'm going to start by making a new part. First thing I'll do is uh, notice we're in our trimetric view. I'm going to choose the top plane and create a sketch. And from here I'll make a three-point arc. Let's make these endpoints vertical with the uh, vertical. There we go with the origin. We're going to select a midpoint, select the origin, and choose horizontal. Uh, we're going to choose our radius here. We'll give this a radius of 6 inches and a vertical dimension of 2.75. Uh, control 7 to go back to trimetric. And let's select the front plane. And on this, we'll also create a sketch. Okay, now I'll uh, create a three-point arc. Immediately select midpoint. I'll choose this arc and select uh, pierce. And now I can choose these two endpoints and make them vertical. I'll go to my dimension. And we'll go two inches tall vertically. Uh, control 8. I have to give this a radius. And I'm going to go with radius of 6 inches. So there we go. I'm going to refresh that. I'm going to choose uh, surfaces, swept surface, this profile along this path, and we'll make that go on both sides by choosing that middle button. And there we've got a surface. I'm going to go into my right plane and create a sketch. Ooh. All right, we'll grab a center line. I'm going to choose that midpoint there down to the origin and then over to this midpoint. And I'm going to make three arcs here, here, and here. They don't have to be exact right now, of course. Selecting uh, these two lines, we'll choose tangent, tangent. I uh, want to give some dimensions to this, so I'm going to give this a radius of 1. We'll give this a radius of 0.25. I want these to be tangent to horizontal, so we'll grab these two points and choose a vertical. We'll grab these two points and choose... Oh, that would work actually, but I might as well choose the end point of the arc, and we'll choose horizontal. I'm going to choose the edge of my surface, tangent, tangent. Uh, finally, what distance do we want this to be? We're going to say 0.75. And that looks like a pacifier or a binky to me. Now we'll mirror entities and hope that our dimensions will carry over. It looks like they didn't quite. So we can choose that dimension and just simply re add our 0.75 to make sure that we have a fully constrained sketch. Mirror ent entities again. And let's mirror about this line. We're fully constrained. Under surfaces, we can do a simple trim or standard trim. Uh, we have a trim tool pre-selected, and I have keep selection selected, so I'll choose the face that I want to keep. And that is starting to look like a pacifier. I want to make another plane offset from my right plane, and that's so we don't have any contact between the surface and the plane. Reference geometry, plane, and point one will flip offset. 
just like that. Now I can uh, create an offset. I'll sketch on plane one. I'll choose, uh, I, I can run back to my trim. With that sketch selected, sketch three, we'll choose uh, offset entities. We'll reverse and have it will go an eighth inch, 0.125. There it is. Next thing that I want to do is uh, let's do a uh, curve. Let's say curves, project curve from here onto this face, just like that. Next thing that I want to do is uh, sketch on plane one. I can take the center point of my circle and make it coincident onto my arc, as well as vertical. Now see my center point is fully constrained. I'm going to give this a dimension of 0 0.2. Just like that. Now I can do an extrusion. Let's move it up a few notches so that we're peaking out here. Excellent. I want to add a fillet, features, uh, fillet, and uh, we're on point one, which is about perfect. And there we've got that bump. Next thing I want to do is a curve-driven pattern, and it may not like this curve. It might divvy it up by tangent point. So let's take a look to see if this will work. I'm going to insert, and we're going to go with pattern, curve-driven pattern. Our direction will be the curve. We are not uh, going to use features and faces, but rather bodies, since we're working in solids, or surfaces, rather. So we have our body selected. Uh, we want a number. I'll do maybe a more reasonable number. Let's try 25. Face normal. Yep. So this ends right at that tangent point. So this curve won't work. And so let's come up with a substitute instead. I'm going to uh, rebuild sketch. We're going to make a 3D sketch. I'm going to choose my curve. We're going to convert entity. So now I've got a 3D sketch that converts entities. Notice we have little points right here where the tangent goes. So even though our sketch is following the uh, uh, curvature that we're on, uh, that still isn't going to be good. So I'm going to hit Control A. Control A will highlight every element of the sketch. And we're going to go to Tools and uh, Spline Tools and Fit Spline. And everything looks good, but I'm going to check the Delete Geometry button. And now we've got a Fit Spline. Uh, that will work here. Uh, the other thing that I can do if I hit Control Z is go to Tools, uh, Spline Tools, Fit Spline, and I can also uncheck the Delete Geometry. And the advantage to that is you have a fully constrained Fit Spline. So it's whatever your uh, personal preference is. We're going to rebuild now. Uh, I'm going to go back to insert. We're going to say pattern. Let's go with curve driven pattern. For my direction, I choose my fit spline. And then again, going to bodies here. And then face normal here. And notice I have 50. That's quite busy. Let's go down to 25. That's about right. So I've got a very nice pattern uh, going around my pacifier or binky. Uh, the next thing I can do is, uh, well, let's get rid of these annoying faces back here. What I'll do is I'm going to say split. And for my trim tool, I'll choose my surface. And with all bodies selected, I'm going to choose Cut Bodies. And now I can hit the little scissor to make sure that all the boxes have check marks. And we hit the green check mark. And now uh, we've 
use this surface to cut these bodies. I do a lot of that in FreeCAD. If you watch my FreeCAD video, it's a great program if you want a free software. Next thing I'll do is uh, delete. We're going to delete or keep a body. I have delete body selected up here. And I can simply choose my 25 bodies that I wish to delete. So we're getting rid of the bodies on uh, the other side of the surface that we don't want, right? We don't want to stab our baby with 25 cylinders and then try to suck on that, <laughs> that pacifier. So we've got that all done. Next thing I want to do, maybe I'll, I'll uh, do a little trim surface and I can hide this plane. I don't think I'll need it for a while. So getting on, uh, well, you know, I think I will use my plane. I don't want to use a, a plane that will intersect my surface in case something doesn't come out right. Let's sketch on plane one. I'm going to make a slot. And I'll utilize my center line once more. All right, making a, a vertical and horizontal center line from the origin. I can go ahead and give this some dimension. So maybe 0.45 here. It looks relatively centered. I'm not that concerned. You can always add reference geometry if you're looking to be exactly centered. Maybe 0.675 here. Uh, we'll give that an angle. We think 55 degrees seems uh, roughly correct. Maybe a straight 0.2 inches. And next, maybe an overall length to our center point, 0.65. Looks about right. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little shorter at 0.5, something like that. Now I can mirror entities, and I'll choose my slot to mirror, and choose my horizontal line. And that mirrored decently well. Let's control 8. Uh, maybe we want to go a little bit thinner. 0.175. Yep. And then we can mirror once more. Slot, slot, and this vertical line. There we have it. Let's exit the sketch. We'll do another standard trim on the Surfaces tab. And then we have Keep Selections selected. So that should be a, a decent pacifier. I'll uh, highlight the surface. Surfaces, we're going to thicken. Uh, 0.1 seems like a fine thickness. There we go. Then we're going to thicken on the side where the bumps aren't. And there we have the beginning of that pacifier. You can choose these uh, curves and hide them so we get a little bit better view. Lastly, uh, we'll just want to add features on either side. You can get really creative with these. I'm going to be quite basic in this video. Uh, right, uh, we're going to make a plane that we can offset whatever distance we want on this one, really. Oop. Almost uh, hit a few keys on my keyboard there. But let's offset this to 0.5 for now. On this plane, we'll create a sketch. We'll create a circle. I we'll want this circle to be something like, how about 0.5? Ooh, maybe 0.65. That looks about right. And now I can say features, uh, rebuild. I don't need this plane any longer. Choose this sketch and wrap. And I'll choose this surface to wrap on. I'll make sure that uh, emboss is highlighted. And I am currently doing a uh, spline surface wrap instead of an analytical wrap. Uh, let's see what coming out half an inch looks like. It's a little bit tall. We can edit the feature. Let's make it uh, 0.3 inches, perhaps. That's a little bit more manageable, I think. Let's add a fillet. 
and we can go reasonably large on, on the fillet. So 0.25 quarter inch fillet, that seems like a winner, right? So we've got that little thing that you can grab onto if you'd like. Some of them have that little handle at the bottom, like a bullhorn that you can grab onto if you wish. Uh, next thing I'll do is choose plane one yet again. This is a nice plane. Uh, we're going to sketch. I'm going to make a generic oval. We'll go with something like 0.75. Vertically, we'll go with something like 0.25. And then to lastly constrain it, we'll choose one of these points and choose vertical. So we've got a fully constrained sketch. And I can do the same thing again by um, rebuilding, going to Features, Curves, Project Curve. We'll take this sketch onto this face. And there we've got a projected face that follows the profile of this back surface. Next thing I'll do is uh, continue on plane one by hitting sketch. And all I have to do is highlight my curve on my sketch and select convert entities, rebuild. Next thing I can do, features, reference geometry, plane. And I can make a plane relative to plane one. We'll choose something like 0.25 and flip offset. Not bad. We'll uh, sketch on this plane. Choose our other sketch. Convert entities. And there we go. I'm going to choose select this plane. Features, reference geometry, plane. This time I can offset maybe two more planes deep, flip offset, and that will save me from creating some more planes in the future, but I think I only need, yep, just two more. This time we're going to sketch on that middle plane. Sketch offset here, and I've got an eighth of an inch pre-selected. I think that's a, a great dimension to offset, and we'll rebuild. Finally, uh, I, I, and I have a few choices on this. I can sketch, I can create a point, and this is what I've done. If you go to GrabCAD, um, and, and, uh, in another, another version of this model, I've made a point. So you can download that if you're interested in seeing what that might look like. I can also, say, make a little circle. So let's give that a try for this video. Point zero, zero 0.005, right? Let's do a really small 5,000 circle. Uh, we'll rebuild, and I don't need to look at these planes anymore. So, there's a little binky profile. Let's go with features, and I'll choose boundary. You know, boundary from here to here, to here, to here, and here. Boundary is nice because it can give you some intermediate control. Um, the thing. You can create some sketch points. Um, I don't want to have a longer video, so uh, I'm going to uh, just get these the best I can without making any references. I'll choose a point, drag my mouse up to uh, do my best to center each of these. Uh, but for a, a proper uh, boundary, you would want to uh, be pretty precise with your curves. So that would be, you know, putting a point in each of these sketches and then clicking on the point to know that these are all consistently vertical with each other. That's a little bit pointy. Notice if I uh, go to my sketch. I don't want to have rebuild errors, so I'm going to create a little point. So I could uh, get rid of my circle. Make it coincident.
that's a little bit less pointy. That's kind of a pointy end to it. I'd have to play around with that, but this is mostly on how to get that pattern right and use surfacing to create a generic pacifier. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.